What's going on guys? It's your boy Sly Jordy and welcome back to F1 23 driver career mode for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and round three of the Formula One World Championship. If you missed last episode, it was the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and we managed to get a P6 just ahead of old rivals Lando Norris and Fernando Alonso. So they might be our main rivals going into this season just like they were for season one of our My Team series. Who knows? But um, yeah, Max Verstappen has taken wins in both of them. And other than that, it has been quite a mixed uh, bag of results for most people. The most consistent people have been Alonso, me, and Carlos Sainz. So Sainz has been very, very consistent. But um, yeah, Verstappen, P1 in both races. And we still have um a difficult race ahead of us and this is actually our first sprint weekend of the season as well baku is a sprint of course and um yeah one of the more difficult races on the calendar i did say last episode that uh, jeddah was the third most difficult track on the calendar and then it was a toss-up between baku and imola i'd say imola is the most difficult grand prix on the calendar as you want to get one shot at the race whereas with baku if you do bad in qualifying um then you've got the sprint race you can make up positions this is the old sprint format by the way so uh sprint is a glorified qualifying um basically uh so yeah we've got baku next and then imola after that and then after that yeah we'll have a lot more easier tracks but yeah so far so good a p6 in jeddah is actually really good and even albon managed to score a point so we're p5 in the constructors as of right now and um We'll be looking to fit in some new engine parts for this race as well. Uh, I'll do it just before qualifying as Baku. One of the quickest circuits on the calendar. At least it's the uh, the track where you reach the highest speed besides Qatar and Las Vegas, of course. But um, yeah, let's see if we've got any upgrades coming in. I think we do have one upgrade, but uh, we've got another upgrade that we can get to work on here um, over wheel winglets. Uh, and other than that, that is about it. I mean, we've got the gearbox reliability testing, ICE improved materials, and turbo improved materials as well. So the ICE is definitely one of the more important parts to get. So we'll do that. And we're actually really good in terms of durability. The second best team on the grid in terms of that, which is dope. Uh, in terms of aerodynamics, definitely one of the weaker teams. Williams have always been one of the weaker teams up until this season in real life. Uh, of course the 2024 season as we finally have a more balanced car and now it's just from now it's just about working from there i'm excited to see where our team will end up um irl but yeah as for the actual game we got some catching up to do but this will put us ahead of Haas and well in our way to catching up to the rest of the grid so other than that we have venturi tunnels arriving just before the season break so um yeah, hopefully we get that as well. So here we go. We were no. Expecting some new developments to come through, but some of them have failed quality control. Ah. Uh, need to tell a team what to redevelop via the R and D screen. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because we'll still get it before Baku, so it's not really that bad of a thing that's happening. But it would have been nice to save some R and D points, of course. But we do have more. I know. So the entire development package. I wish we could turn off these things, Any but season break, boom, cable assembly arrives. And we've got open wheel winglets as well as improved materials for the ICE. We ah! To come through, but some of them have failed quality control. We'll need to tell the team what to redevelop via the R&D screen. All right, ignition system. Unfortunately, oh, we really would have loved to have that right before Baku. That would have had made us basically the most powerful engine on the grid by quite a bit other than Ferrari, you know? Being able to be that much quicker than the rest of the Mercedes guys and, of course, Red Bull. We still are quicker than them, but, yeah, that's definitely something uh, I will be missing. But chassis upgrades, we've got a lot more to work with. And aerodynamics, we've got some more to work with as well. So the season is starting to open up quite a little bit there. Uh, we've got another durability upgrade coming in really, really soon. So uh, I don't know why we're focusing on durability when I think we should be focusing on these three. But whatever team, do what you want. In terms of driver perks, we have about 300k so we can spend money on one of these. Uh, so we're going to go with... Um, 
What does driver acclaim do? Because I know it was important in my team, but does it really do anything for driver? I guess it would up upgrade the perk fund as a whole, right? Or would we want the resource point income? I think I think this is more important. So we're going to go with that, the development feedback. And um, yeah, once again, push forward. More weekly resources. We're going to get that durability upgrade and then even more weekly uh, resources as we now go into the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Shut up. I'm sick of hearing you with the same messages. Can you not? Anyway, here we go. This is, uh, again, one of the more difficult tracks uh, in the game. I would honestly say, actually, just on a particular section, uh, it might actually be the most difficult track in the game to get right. And uh, look at this. That is different. We've got full wet in the sprint, I think, or changeable conditions in the sprint, actually. So uh, that will be something um I'll be curious to see. Let's actually have a look at R&D, the progress history. Uh, pretty much everybody has made upgrades apart from Red Bull going into this weekend. Uh, we are getting closer and closer towards Alpine, so uh, that's good. Uh, Mercedes have jumped up ahead of Ferrari, and uh, McLaren's have actually become the second most powerful car on the grid, and uh, those are probably major durability upgrades, because trust me, after the first two episodes, they're going to need them uh, with the DNF for Russell and a DNF for Hamilton. No one else has DNF'd on the grid. It's just uh, Mercedes that need to work their stuff out. But uh, yeah, going into it, we've got some messages here. Uh, some things failed, some things uh, applied really well. Pretty much everything co ended up completing apart from the ignition system, which will be coming pretty soon. We've got about... Uh, 1,060 R&D points, so uh, can't work on either of these, we could work on the plank, um, chassis might need some more upgrades, aerodynamics, uh, I mean one of these is going to do wonders, uh, we could get to work more on the powertrain, actually no we can't, we've got that final upgrade coming in and then um, these two are unavailable, and we've got more durability stuff here, so uh, we could go with any of these chassis upgrades, to be quite honest. They're all minor upgrades, but, um, you know, they'll all build up eventually. And uh, I think it's something we should probably start getting to work on. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get a new plank. And, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into our uh, qualifying session around Baku. Yeah, and I nearly forgot, because it's a sprint weekend, we only have one opportunity to actually put in some new parts. So uh, we're certainly going to put in a new ICE for this event. And other than that, I think we're actually all cool, to be fair. Uh, so I'm not going to fit in anything more, but um, it might be worth fitting in a new MGUH. I'm not too sure. can result in further overheating, so... Maybe it might be worth putting a new one in, but we also need to think of the rest of the season. But I'm going I'm to go for it, you know, because uh, it is a very hot, uh, it is very hot in Azerbaijan. So we're obviously going to fit a new one. Turbocharger, very tempting to fit a new one in, uh, but I'm not going to go with it. Same for the gearbox, that's kind of tempting as well. But um, I would rather just save it a little bit. I think that could be worth one more Grand Prix. So here we are qualifying for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's going to be a long uh, weekend. We've got not only the full Grand Prix, but we've also got the sprint race coming up. And uh, like I said earlier, this is old sprint rules. So qualifying doesn't essentially matter that much, I suppose. Um, this will only dictate the sprint race. And then the sprint race I itself is sort of a glorified qualifying. So yeah. Uh, we've got three qualifying sessions ahead of us. I've actually decided to keep the uh, normal qualifying sessions. Uh, I know I said either earlier on this episode or um, last episode that we were going to switch to short qualifying. But I thought, oh, why not just shorten the editing to where it's almost like short qualifying. And we'll see how this goes for this season. Maybe I'll switch it uh, to short qualifying and still go ahead with that. Uh, and maybe I won't, I don't know. But yes, Baku is uh, the most difficult track 
on the calendar in my opinion you know i've done some time trials of both baku and imola which is our next track uh, recently and uh, yeah i can say without a doubt that the azerbaijan grand prix is the most difficult track in f123 the curbs are ruthless in this game and baku you're going to be hitting them a lot and um as you can tell by this q1 lap uh we've hit uh, a lot of the curves so it's been a bit of a shaky um it's been a bit of a shaky lap uh but it should be quick enough to get us through to q2 quite easily let's be real um i i'm feeling quite confident about our speed down the straight it's just more uh, our, uh, uh the aerodynamics uh, that i'm more worried about uh, sorry about the stuttering i haven't recorded uh vocals in quite a few days um I've just got a lot of videos that I have been working on uh, and I've been pretty busy lately as well. I'm still working on a Black Ops 6 review. Um, I've been working on an Advanced Warfare 10 years later video. That will also be coming out this week. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes out for that. Uh, I've been playing Size Matters in the background, Challenge Mode. So that's uh, a video in its recording phase. And then we've got Secret Agent Clank coming in a few days. So we'll be live streaming that. But uh, yes, we usually skip through Q2. P9 for us, we make it through to Q3. And Albon actually qualifies really well in P11, ahead of uh, Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin and the two Alpines. So uh, that really does show how strong the Williams is uh, around this track. There is a good chance at double points. And speaking of double points, in real life, we actually secured double points. And uh, it makes me it makes me think, do we really need Carlos Sainz? Because we're getting Sainz in the Williams next year. But Colapinto, man. Bravo. Bravo, Colapinto. Uh, hopefully he is in F2 uh, next year, uh, next season. I have heard rumors that he might be. Um, even though he will have completed about just under half a Formula 1 season. But I, I hope he is because we'll 100% do a short career mode series with Colapinto. I feel like that could be... Uh, something that could be really fun. Uh, I really hope so because um, I am not I'm not playing F124 and that's another thing We've got to go back to F124 pretty soon uh, Because the sports update is out either now or in a couple of days. I don't know uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be wanting to test out the new F2 cars uh, so that will also be live so um, make sure you got your notifications on for that but yes as you could probably tell this is a much cleaner lap of course uh, we did uh, only one lap of Q2 uh, I think we did one lap in Q1 as well um, and yeah we're only doing one lap in each session I'm really trying to save our tires this weekend as uh, you know we need soft tires for the sprint uh, but yeah it's looking really clean the lap is looking really good and honestly yeah I, I I think I could go as far as to say this is probably the best I'm going to get at Baku without sacrificing the setup. I think I've got the setup down and uh, my driving around this track is really good. So it, it gets me thinking maybe if we get in a much quicker car, um, like in the Red Bull or whatever, we could be like securing pole position or something like that. But we've still got the main straight to go as we engage DRS. Let's see what position we are going to be in for the sprint race it is p6 so that's really really strong i think isn't that our strongest qualifying position of the season so far either way it's time to get to the grid for the sprint race here we go as we await the five red lights and away we go here we go it's a great start from us it's a horrible start for lando norris prime bottler lando norris that's an awful start falling from p1 all the way down to p5 you could tell i hesitated a little bit i really didn't know what to make of it but we have jumped up from p6 to p4 and now we look to follow the two ferraris who are both on medium tires i think verstappen's on the soft so uh, different strategies going on in this sprint race right here but what a horrendous start for lando norris practically gifting max verstappen the lead here in the sprint race and Verstappen has already been unstoppable this season it's typical Verstappen um, but yeah Norris had the chance I mean he would have had an insane advantage as well if the medium tires do happen to work out you know like he would have been able to be quicker than Verstappen and may have been able to run away with it but no that is just 
an absolutely awful, probably one of the worst starts to a Grand Prix I've ever seen. Like, uh, even given his standards in real life, like in the game, that's probably one of the worst I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, I'm working hard here trying to keep up with the Ferraris. They seem to have a huge advantage in aerodynamics. It seems as though the mediums and the softs seem to be quite similar. Um, in terms of grip levels as of right now, which is, is kind of strange. I don't know though, Verstappen has pulled away from uh, signs a little bit, so maybe it's on a car-to-car -car basis, but Red Bull are the best in terms of aerodynamics, so, you know, that's just drastically different from my car, but, uh, yeah. As first laps go, we've now jumped up to P4, and like I said, the sprint race uh, in the old format was essentially a glorified qualifying, so, uh, yeah, that's a really good start to the race, and um, we even got the fastest Sector 3 to show for it. But here we go, moving on towards the end of lap 2 now, and we've used almost all of our ERS, but we may have a pretty good chance of overtaking Charles Leclerc here as we secure the inside line, and that is beautiful braking. That is a clean overtake, and that has put us into P3, although I got a bit flustered after that. I was really really close to the wall coming out of turn one there and uh, we now need to try and see if we can catch up to Carlos Sainz while also keeping Leclerc behind us but yeah um, that was very good from us and a really good corner there as well that actually uh, gained us a tenth on Sainz there so uh, yeah like I said the softs and the mediums seem to be very very similar in this sprint race but here we go now as we are on lap five it took a little bit of time and patience but here we go not even using ERS and we are easily past Carlos Sainz who has no DRS he has completely lost pace to Verstappen so Verstappen is driven really really well in clean air here and that is pretty much uh, the end of our sprint race I'm pretty sure as we now move on to um, basically the towards the end of the final lap and uh, we've just got to keep signs behind us and I think we'll be fine because I've saved quite a lot of ERS during this lap you know I've had uh, I didn't have to catch up to anybody I knew we weren't going to uh, catch Verstappen so I took the opportunity to recharge as much ERS as possible so even though the Ferraris do have DRS we had enough ERS to secure P2 what a sprint race for us that is absolutely incredible we will be starting P2 for the full race in Baku. So without further ado, let's go to the grid. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home, of course, to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes, and hopefully out of the barriers. Baku City Circuit then. It's an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he'll start from pole position. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Leclerc, Norris, Russell, Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Albon, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Gasly, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Ocon, Bottas, Joe, Ricardo, and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Well, an amazing sprint race for us in Baku puts us right behind the championship leader, Max Verstappen, uh, in this Grand Prix. And I'm going to trust the race engineers with this one. I saw there wasn't too much of a difference between the softs and the mediums, 
in that sprint race, so I'm actually going to go mediums to hards, but uh, here's something that might be a little scary for us. A lot of the guys behind us, other than Leclerc, are actually going on the hards, starting on the hards, so they're going to get more grip uh, in the second stint. Um, I guess we'll have to see like when people pit or whatever. Leclerc is uh, probably going to pit earlier than anyone else unless he plans to go long on the softs. Maybe he's made the same observation as I have that they seem to be very similar in terms of grip. At least they were okay, yesterday in the sprint. But sure yes, lined up on the grid stuff. and we're actually pointing towards Verstappen. I really want to make sure that we can secure the race lead for the first time as the lights go out and away we go. And it's a beautiful start from us it's p1 going into turn one there you go and uh, oh that is a great move from uh, carlos signs on charles leclerc i think leclerc got a better start and was aiming to go down the inside for the um for p3 right there but no carlos signs able to defend that really really well and i think uh, that's how it's going to stay for the ferraris because um there are a lot more points uh, on show for Ferrari. I think they're going to be easily winning the Constructors' Championship this season. But yeah, P1 for us ahead of Max Verstappen. And uh, now we're going to see if we can get away as quickly as possible. But this is like one of the worst cars aerodynamically. No, we are the worst car aerodyna aerodynamically in like in any near uh, vicinity. You know, whereas Max Verstappen that's the RB19, you know? This is season one of F123. That is the best car aerodynamically by far. So even though we do have the um, the tire advantage, I highly, highly doubt we're going to be able to stay um, that far ahead of Verstappen. However, I, I am quite confident that we'll be able to stay in front of Verstappen, at least for the first few laps. It's definitely the first couple as DRS doesn't get enabled until lap three in this game. It's lap two in f124 so that took something to get you it uh, was something to get used to uh but yeah so far so good and uh, you know i've gotten a lot better at saving and harvesting ers in this game since um you know <laughs> since the beginning of us playing f123 i used to be really bad at it i used to spend it way too much in the early goings but um yeah we've done pretty well there um, and we're, all, we're only down to about 67. Usually by now I'm down to like 50% ERS. But we've done really, really well uh, in the early goings right here. As we are now on to lap two. And we're comfortably about five tenths away from Verstappen. He'll be using ERS and he's also got the slipstream as well. But um, we're definitely pulling away from signs a little bit. And that, oh, I really, really try to get as close to that wall as possible in that corner. And we've actually hit it. Very lucky. Um, not to receive any damage there at all, but uh, that definitely lost us quite a bit of time to what we, you know, possibly could have gained. Even so, that is a purple sector one for us, and uh, we've saved a lot of ERS as well, about 10% just in that first sector. And for F123, that's big. That's a lot of ERS saved as we um, now move on to lap number five. Uh, I've been able to keep a stap in behind for this long although uh, i think uh, around this lap is when the tires uh, tire advantage for the hards is uh, going to start kicking in as verstappen is also going to get drs and he stayed relatively close he's actually using ers through this section i'm pretty sure look at that he is gaining quite a lot and uh, look at this amazing view right here and you can really see how much closer Verstappen is getting with the ERS and the DRS that he's using. And he makes the move down the inside, clean as you like. Um, there was absolutely no point. I don't think there was any ability, any space to fight that. So we just got to tuck behind Verstappen and just take the L for now and uh, see if we can possibly regain the position. And here we are on uh, lap seven now. And look at this, Verstappen dis uh, defending really, really awkwardly. And um, yeah, I'm not really happy with that as we're now side by side. Although I break a bit earlier to go down the inside, there's contact there. And Verstappen, his wheel hits the wall and ricochets off, bouncing towards me. That is um, really, really aggressive from both me and Max here. And honestly, you expect anything less from us two drivers as we now go around the outside. Uh, that is beautiful. He had to break a little bit earlier just to make it through that corner. So, uh, 
yeah, Verstappen really tried to take the inside, but we made sure to stick with it, and uh, we have reclaimed P1 uh, in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. But for how long? Verstappen might retake that position, and uh, you know, who knows? But um, apparently not, as Verstappen I think got a little flustered from that exchange. Um, I don't think he received any damage. I highly doubt it. Uh, but we managed to actually knock him out of DRS, which is a huge opportunity for us. Although, Sainz got so much overspeed that he's pretty much already within DRS once again. So, um, I don't know what happened with Verstappen. I don't think he received any damage. Uh, if we looked at, uh, you know, the view that we had, um, Verstappen's wings seemed completely intact. So, uh, I don't think there was a huge problem for Max there, but who knows. Uh, but we're getting some signs of engine wear, and that is actually the gearbox. So uh, hopefully that doesn't impact us later on in the Grand Prix. We know uh, the gearbox starts jamming when it gets to a certain point of uh, wear. Uh, but yeah, signs has actually caught up quite a lot here, and it really just goes to show just how much uh, the mediums are now starting to go off. And honestly, it's starting to sink in that I've had a bad strategy. And uh, definitely going to be sinking in now as Charles Leclerc goes into the pits alongside George Russell. Those guys are going for an undercut and we're really about to see just how bad um, that could end up being. I think the undercut might be really, really strong. And honestly, this has been an awful lap on the mediums. The science is stuck right behind me the entire time. I don't think Verstappen has any damage. He may have ran into a bit of an engine issue as he's managed to keep up decently well as well but yeah these tires are feeling awful and I think we should have pit on lap eight you know uh, I think obviously the hard to medium strategy is going to be the strongest one and um, yeah uh, we should have pitted earlier to counter that um, but yeah we're, we're gonna see what the damage is we're about to assess the damage I tried to go into the pits as quickly as possible to really try and gain some time but Keep an eye on Leclerc and Russell on that leaderboard and um, Ricardo as well, I suppose, as that's where they seem to be. Um, and yeah, look at this. Coming out of the pits now is a pretty good pit stop. I'm trying to really get out as quickly as possible. And there is Leclerc going past. And there's Russell. Oh, my God, that was scary. Uh, pretty much um, trying to go past me as we came out the pits and now Russell is challenging us as we come out now this is going to cost us so much time as I try to squeeze him to the inside there and we go around the outside similar to how we did to Max Verstappen that is going to cost us quite a lot of time there um, and that's that's him on the mediums like we weren't able to stay ahead of Russell quite purely on the fact that he's got a lot more grips and uh, a lot more grip and now it's sinking in just how bad this could be as we now aim to catch up to Ricardo. We Ricardo, and we really need to make this pass as quickly as possible. Leclerc is just over a second ahead. If we can somehow get past Ricardo, oh, but that's not going to be good as at all. Coming out of the castle section, hitting the wall, it's just a really, really a, a nightmare outlap for us. And now I, I'm having to get off the throttle and to to even tried to challenge Ricardo, and I mean, I get really aggressive with him there because I am so annoyed with um, how much time we just lost uh, to Leclerc there. And Leclerc, in the meantime, made the pass on Guan Yu Zhou. Uh, it seems the uh, Salbers are going long here. Bottas has just picked. Gasly leads. Joe going long. Um, and yeah, Leclerc might just be too far ahead now. He's on the mediums. We're struggling on these hards, and I think we just went with the wrong tire strategy so at this point it's all about just keeping p2 in the grand scheme of things we don't need the win you know this is already going to be an absolutely incredible result but it is definitely disappointing because there was for sure potential for a win today as we now get a yellow flag behind us on lap 12 who is that and it's it's Verstappen it's Max Verstappen and that is that basically just confirms uh, your winner for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix it is such a great strategy um, that Ferrari and Leclerc have um, you know concocted here but now as we move on to the last lap because practically nothing happened Lando Norris engine failure as we were on the last lap that has got to be heartbreaking for him a nightmare race for Norris after that start but have a look at how much science is going to be pulling on me here. You can't tell me that this isn't a bug. 
you know, either the mediums were just apparently so much better in this race than the sprint weekend, or this is an AI bug, similar to how we had in Imola for the last season of my team, as Signs is actually going to pull on me by over a second uh, here throughout this lap. It's actually really weird and uncanny, and uh, it really does um, kind of scare me for how the main straight could be, as he is pulling like mad. I don't know if he's saved up on so much ERS and he's using it all throughout this lap now, but oh man. And that engine wear thing, that's not anything majorly important. That's only the gearbox. None of my gears are jamming. My, my car is functioning the same way as it has throughout the whole Grand Prix. But Sainz has gained so, so much in this lap. That's suspicious, you know. I'm, I'm still on our normal difficulty of 95 as well. So I don't understand how, where he's getting that speed from, but it's crazy. But... Uh, yeah, we got to talk about the man of the hour, the man of the race. What a race for Charles Leclerc coming out of nowhere to finally win the Azerbaijan Grand Prix after all of the polls. The one uh, Grand Prix where he doesn't get pole position there, he manages to secure the win. And we have just about managed to secure P2 against Sainz, just like Jeddah. A photo finish across the line, but what a race for us that was absolutely fantastic and um we should be proud of that and here's our winner pulling their ferrari into park Ferme after a fantastic race anthony davidson what helped them deliver this results do you think well they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track i think their ability to keep their cool even during some of the more hectic parts of the race meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease ferrari are at it again an excellent performance at today's grand prix and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there well, Ferrari with a masterclass of a strategy here with Charles Leclerc. What an undercut. He was probably the only person in that top 10 that even started on the softs. And it was a great stint for him. And it seemed as though the undercut was king here. We really should have pit on lap 8. And lap 9, I, I told you, it was terrible on those mediums. They really wore out by then. And we should have gone for that. And that's the perfectionist in me. Realistically, this is obviously our best result of the season. This is going to be one of our biggest results of the entire season. Might even be the biggest. And yet, there was potential for a win here. If I just matched uh, the, the hards to medium strategy that a lot of other people did... Uh, we would have done a lot better. But, um, yeah, P2, still amazing. And we still came out of that weekend with 25 points, which is a huge haul of points. And that puts us P4 in the standing. Charles Leclerc is the new championship leader by one point after Max Verstappen's uh, spin. And uh, he finished out of the points. I think he ended up in, like, P18, something like that. It was insane nightmare for him. Uh, Carlos Sainz is only 10 points off. We're, to be fair, only 16 points off the top. So who knows what will happen. But looking at the constructors now, that is a very strong P4 right up there with the likes of McLaren and Mercedes. So maybe we'll be able to compete with them. I highly doubt it, though, since we are essentially a one-man team. Albon, he's doing all right. But, um, yeah, clearly not getting into the top 10 enough as he finished P12. Um, but, yeah. Next episode, the Imola Grand Prix, and that will complete our triple header of the hardest circuits in the game. So be sure to check that out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.